Lately, I've been loving starting my day with a coconut milk matcha as some pre-workout caffeine. After my workout, I make a coffee and start work for the day. This ice white mocha is the highlight of my day every day. A lot of people say you shouldn't drink your calories during fat loss and that it's a waste. So for a while, I tried having black coffee and sugar-free sweeteners and I absolutely hated it. So instead I've made swaps elsewhere so I can continue having a sugary ice latte. This usually runs me about 200 to 250 calories, but for me, it is so worth it. I learned the hard way that you can have it all, but not all at once. So I did have to make sacrifices elsewhere in my diet to make space for this, but it's been a really important lesson that I've taken with me. There are no rules for fat loss except getting into a calorie deficit, and there are so many ways to do that. I would encourage you to find what works for you and try to tune out the noise of what other people say you should or shouldn't do. The only thing that you really need to do is get into that deficit in whatever way makes sense for you. date obsession is getting a little bit out of hand. I've gotten into the habit of having a date every morning. They are just so sweet and they taste like caramel to me. Hi, okay, so I wanted to add some context to this what I eat in a day and give you some background about my goals, what I'm doing right now, why I'm eating the way I am, just so that you can understand a little bit more. So right now, my primary goal is fat loss. In the last 14 months, I've lost about 25 pounds, which I am super proud of and really excited about. And hopefully I only have like five or 10 more pounds to go because honestly, I am starting to lose my mind a little bit over here. I think I'm close to the point where I can switch into maintenance mode and stop trying to lose fat, but I just have some physique goals and fitness goals that I'm working towards that I will be sharing more about in my next video and I'm starting a series around that I think everyone will really enjoy. So make sure to stay tuned for that. And just to be clear, what works for me may not necessarily work for you, but I'm sharing what I'm doing in case there are things that you can pull from and try out in your own life that can be helpful. So personally, I do track calories. Calorie tracking is one of those things that for me is really annoying, but it has accelerated my results for fat loss like crazy. And it's something I'm planning to do for the rest of my fat loss phase based on the advice of professionals I trust and what I learned in my nutrition certification. A 10 to 20% calorie deficit from maintenance is the ideal range to make sure that we are not losing too much muscle mass. And it also increases the likelihood that this weight loss will actually be sustainable, which is definitely something I want. I do not want to keep doing this over and over again. So up until about two weeks ago, I was doing a 10 to 15% deficit, which I found challenging, but not too difficult. And I jumped it up to 20. The mental fatigue of being in a fat loss phase being in a deficit is getting pretty intense. So that is why I decided to speed things up to try to finish out as quickly as possible and go back into maintenance. If you've been following my channel, then you may remember I started my cut back in March of 2023. It is now May, 2024, almost June, 2024. So I've been at this for over 14 months. That is a long time. And of course I could take a break at any point that I want, but I've developed such good habits. I'm in such a good flow and routine. I just want to finish it out personally. I know that diet breaks and scheduled maintenance and stuff like that can be really helpful for a lot of people. And if you are struggling with your diet, that may be something like a tool that you can consider using. But where I'm at right now, I think the best thing for me will be to just finish out this next, hopefully just month or two. Maybe if I'm lucky, I can get it done in the next 90 days, get to my physique goal that I will tell you more about in my next video. While we're here, while we're chatting, I wanted to talk a little bit about the realities of fat loss because I do hear people saying it's hard, but I want to explain exactly what I mean so that you feel less alone if you are struggling with these things during fat loss or or just so you know the realities of it before getting into it. At least this has been my reality. I know it can be different for different people. Even when I do everything right, I prioritize fiber and protein. I eat low calorie, high volume foods like fruits and vegetables to feel fuller. I continue enjoying foods I love in moderation so I'm not restricting. Sometimes I'll even take a full day off of tracking and just enjoy myself and take a little bit of a break. I drink lots of water. I exercise consistently. It is still very, very hard to be in a fat loss phase. I feel hungry and it is hard to feel hungry. I don't always end the day feeling satisfied. Evenings are the hardest for me because I'm usually a nighttime snacker and that's been a habit I've had to kind of break during my fat loss phase. I feel like by the end of the day, I start to feel the hunger from the whole day just like building up on me and it can be really, really challenging. The last couple of nights honestly have been really, really hard for me. I've just been struggling going to bed feeling really hungry. So that's just the reality for me right now. I wanted to be honest and that's okay. It's not something that's going to last forever. Hopefully I'll be maintaining soon and I will get through it. <laughs> I really hope that context was helpful. 
bowl, I'm gonna go downstairs and make a smoothie bowl, which has been one of my recent obsessions. I've been using the Ninja Creamy to make it and the texture and consistency that you get making an acai bowl in the Ninja Creamy is insane. So for the Ninja Creamy, you have to freeze the base the night before. So the way I made this base, I just used half of a frozen acai puree packet, half a banana, 30 grams of blueberries, a serving of vanilla protein powder, and enough unsweetened coconut milk just to fill up to the fill line. If you don't have a Ninja Creamy, you can combine all of this in a blender and just blend it. But if you want that super thick sorbet scoopable texture, I would highly recommend checking out the Ninja Creamy. Then I gave my fruit a bath. I added cold water, a splash of vinegar, and some baking soda into a bowl and let it sit for about 10 minutes. This helps to remove pesticide residue, dirt, and bacteria. Washing with water is also great too, but if you want to give your fruit a deep clean, then this is a really great method. Then I sliced up my toppings for the acai bowl. I like to use just whatever I have on hand. So this week I had strawberries, blueberries, bananas, and cherries. Fruit has tons of micronutrients, vitamins, especially vitamin C and fiber. And the fiber helps keep you fuller for longer, which is super helpful during fat loss. Berries especially are very low calorie and high volume. So I love that. I can eat tons and tons of them. I would eat a lot more of them if they weren't so expensive. I swear berries cost me an arm and a leg every week. The protein included in the acai base helps to make this meal a lot more satiating. I also added a sprinkling of peanut butter granola for a little bit of fat and a nice crunch. Sometimes I will also add nut butters. I also sprinkled on a little bit of shredded unsweetened coconut, but you can really add any toppings you want. This is a surprisingly filling breakfast and I seriously look forward to it every day. Coming to you live from my couch. I just spent the last couple of hours editing. That smoothie bowl was absolutely delicious and pretty filling. I haven't been hungry over the last couple of hours, but I'm starting to feel hungry. You may have noticed that I am kind of intermittent fasting a little bit. So it clearly wasn't a strict fast because I had matcha and I had coffee. But for me, essentially skipping breakfast has been a really helpful fat loss tool. If you'd suggested to me a year ago to skip breakfast, I would have been like no chance. But over time, I've slowly pushed my breakfast back later and later in the morning and gotten used to it. So now I I usually don't eat until somewhere between 11 and 1 and it really just depends on how I feel that day during the part of the day where I am eating my meals and snacks they can be a lot larger and more filling and satisfying and I honestly don't really miss having breakfast right when I wake up because I don't feel hungry right when I wake up anymore if you're one of those people who could not imagine not having breakfast right when you wake up then this definitely probably wouldn't be a tool that would be helpful for you but it is just kind of a tool in my toolkit that I'm using as a part of my fat loss so I thought I would mention it also I didn't take a video of it, but I did have a sneaky handful of Dots honey mustard pretzels and I wanted to share some thoughts on this and how I think about these ultra processed high calorie foods, which I'm just going to call unhealthy foods for the rest of this video. Basically just the foods that don't align with my personal health goals right now. One of the ways that I approach unhealthy foods in my diet is enjoying them in moderation. But the problem with this is that I find a lot of the time once I start, I can't stop. These pretzels are a great example. Like I have been able to stop, but it's very hard for me. And there is a scientific reason for this. Ultra processed foods are low in fiber, low in protein, highly palatable. They have lots of salt. They taste amazing. And we can basically just eat them forever and ever without ever feeling full and satisfied. So sometimes I just avoid these foods altogether, which sounds sad and it is kind of sad. But honestly, that is easier for me sometimes than starting to eat them and then having to stop. Over time, my goal is to kind of just remove these foods slowly from my diet altogether because I find that also when you go from eating one of these unhealthy foods to eating healthy foods, it makes the healthy food taste worse. If you were to have a bite of cookies and cream ice cream and then go straight into eating a strawberry, the strawberry would probably taste not that sweet, very sour, not as good as if you just ate the strawberry by itself. I find that having these foods in my diet makes it a little bit harder to eat healthy day to day. So one of my goals is to have more and more whole foods in my diet, which is good because that is both a health goal and also will help me with fat loss since these foods tend to be lower in calorie. Sorry if you hear Cal in the background. He is graciously making us healthy pizza crust for us to have pizza for dinner tonight, which I am super excited about. And that is actually the other way that I approach unhealthy foods during fat loss is making healthy versions. This pizza dough has Greek yogurt in it. It's a little bit lower calorie and higher protein than a normal pizza crust. And then we're also using light mozzarella on top and are just being mindful with the toppings. And we're using whole wheat flour so that, fiber. so that's good for, <laughs> you can't interrupt me. <laughs> and we're also, is there a fly? The recipe also uses whole wheat fiber, fiber. <laughs> Got her off her game, let's go. Yeah. And the recipe also uses 
whole wheat flour, which is good for extra fiber. In the last few days, I made a healthy lime cheesecake with no added sugar, so I used monk fruit sweetener instead. And I also made a protein mac and cheese a couple days ago that was also amazing. So I love taking foods that are usually unhealthy and usually wouldn't align with my fat loss goals, and I'll find a recipe that will add protein, fiber, decrease the calories, use less processed foods. And these foods usually don't taste as good as the original version, but I can still enjoy them for what they are and not feel like I'm missing out on foods that I would normally be able to enjoy. And honestly, the longer I go without having the original version, the more I start to forget what the original even tastes like. A good example of this is soda. It has been so long since I've had a full sugared soda that I honestly barely remember what it tastes like. I'm so used to having like stevia sweetened zero calorie sodas that I kind of just think that's how they are now. But I think that's one of the big misconceptions about fat loss is that you can't have any unhealthy foods. Like you have to just be eating salads and protein shakes and chicken and broccoli the entire time, which is definitely not the case, especially if you're willing to prioritize, make some sacrifices or find healthier, lower calorie versions of the foods that you love that you can still really enjoy. So here's the deal. The whole wheat pizza crust ended up being a little thick for me, a little dry. It definitely was not as tasty as a regular pizza, but honestly, I would probably have it again. I think the next time maybe I do half regular flour, half whole wheat flour, try to find a way to make the dough a little bit more moist, maybe roll it out a little bit thinner. But the one thing this pizza did really, really well, it was super filling, which was probably because of the extra protein and fiber in the crust from the Greek yogurt and the whole wheat flour. So it definitely tastes different, but I thought it was still delicious as it was. But I would not go into this with the expectation that it'll taste like a regular pizza. These days I eat almost all of my meals at home. I just personally find it hard to find healthy options that fit my dietary restrictions when I go out to eat or get takeout since I'm a very picky eater and I'm a vegetarian. I am hard to please. Eating at home is nice because it saves money and I think cooking can be really fun. But here's the thing, I feel like doing dishes has become a full-time job at this point. When I eat all my meals at home, I am constantly doing dishes. That's one of the reasons I love meal prepping a few things every week because it does save a lot of dishes. But still, even when I do that, the reality is that I'm drowning in dishes every day. I am back on the couch. I am so exhausted today. It's just been one of those days. Something else that I try to focus on a lot during fat loss especially is hydration. So I try to drink between 80 and 100 ounces of plain water a day and I, I don't discriminate. I add all types of other water in my day too. For the last week or so I've been loving tea but I also love sparkling water. Sometimes I will add stevia and lemon and lime juice or a splash of fruit juice. I love zero calorie sodas like the Favorite Day brand is really great. I'm about to make my Ninja Creamy and let me tell you, I was so resistant to the Ninja Creamy for so long. I was like, how is this different? than an ice cream maker, what a waste of money, it's massive, it's loud, I don't want it. And my boyfriend finally convinced me to get it and I'm obsessed with it. I will admit that I was completely wrong. Pretty much every night I will have a protein ice cream and what I include in it is just Fairlife ultra filtered protein milk. I use 2%, one scoop of protein powder and then that makes up a serving. And I love to top it with treat foods because the protein itself is really low calorie, high protein, super healthy. So I will top it with like amazing toppings. A couple days ago, I bought Ben and Jerry's cookie dough. You can buy like the dough bites separately in the freezer section. I got them at Target. I add sprinkles, I add peanut butter cups, I add candy, we've added Oreos, whatever I want really, I will just measure it out and I'll usually add between like 50 and 150 calories of toppings for the most part. If I have extra calories, then I add more for fun. It's amazing because I feel like the toppings help to satisfy me mentally <laughs> and have something that's like really, really tasty. And then the protein ice cream tastes very similar in my opinion to regular real ice cream, but you have no added sugar and you get tons of protein and it's super low calorie, so I love that. It's honestly become one of my favorite parts of the day. So yeah, I am using the creamy twice a day at this point, once in the morning for my smoothie bowls and then once at night for my ice cream and I am not complaining. I wish it was a little bit quieter. It literally sounds like a jet engine, but besides that, I have no complaints. It is amazing and has been well worth the money for me so far. So that's what I eat in a day. And the reality is fat loss can be challenging even when you do everything right. But if you get creative and you're willing to prioritize, you don't have to give up treat foods altogether. You can still have delicious foods that you love every single day and reach your fat loss goals. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you'd like to see more from me, hit subscribe. I upload new videos every three days and I will see you next time.